I don't know how it's going to turn out, and part of me is holding my breath, particularly on the international front, but it could not be a more exciting time. So whilst there are specifics that are very American, there are themes that are global. And one of them is this search for solutions and simplicity, and somebody's going to fix it. And another, I think, is this sense that the established structures have not delivered. In America, it's Washington. And those of us who live here know how much Washington, I'm going to tell you, Washington really is not liked around the country. And for people who live in Britain, it was Brussels and Westminster. And they have not delivered for people who have not been the beneficiaries of globalization, which, of course, is also just beginning when I came here in 96. This huge tectonic shift in the world economy. And I think all we heard about were the upsides and the realization that there were downsides and some people who were going to lose their jobs and were not going to be re-employable in this massive sweep of globalization. Those people who had been left behind, we heard from them in Brexit and we've heard from them in this election as well. So some of the trends are a sense that immigration has got out of control. That was definitely part of the Brexit vote. It was part of the Italian vote last weekend, too. And if Marine Le Pen, the leader of the National Front, which is an uh, outright nationalist, anti-immigrant, I would put it to you, anti-Semitic party in France, if Marine Le Pen gets even close to becoming president of France next spring, that will be a real sign that these are not just economic nationalist movements, but they are nativist, anti-immigrant, in Europe, anti-Semitic movements as well. So there are definitely kind of global trends, even though each country has its um, own distinct models that have led, I think, to where we are today.